G'day you cheeky dogs, my name's Margie and I'm an Australian currently living in America. Today's video is going to be a breakdown of Bluey season 3 episode Space, but it's not going to be like my usual breakdowns. So if you've watched any of those videos before, generally what I like to do is go through the episode, give my thoughts and feelings on it as we go along, let you know about any easter eggs and references as we see them, but that's not going to work for the episode Space. So if you've seen it, you'll understand why. It's one of those episodes that kind of leaves you feeling really confused because you need to see the end before you see the start to kind of get what's going on. So what we're going to be doing instead is I'm going to break down the meaning of this episode and sort of putting it in the right order basically so you can understand what's going on in it and then I'm going to go through just the easter eggs and the references after that. So that's going to be how we'll do this video for today but if you liked the episode space don't forget to hit that like button down below. It definitely was a really beautiful episode but yes very confusing. So let's break it down then and rather than starting at the synopsis we're going to start with the title instead, Space. This episode of Bluey is called Space. If you're ever going to feel small and alone, it's going to be in space. I want to start this by seeing if you can remember one of your earliest memories from when you were a child. Most likely, it's not going to be a positive memory. Some of our earliest memories usually tend to be a little bit more traumatic or sad or things that make us maybe angry or feel some kind of way because those are the memories that stick in your head. The happy ones we don't tend to remember as much because, well, they were happy. There was nothing really traumatizing, I guess, about them. For an example, the issue of being abandoned or getting lost is probably the most common experience that a lot of young children feel. I know for myself, I have that memory from when I was maybe three or four years old. I was in, I think, daycare, everyone was napping. And when I woke up, everyone was gone. It was just me left on the ground on my mattress. And nothing wrong with that. The daycare providers just wanted me to sleep longer because I was still asleep. But when I woke up, I still remember thinking that I had been left, that I had been left alone, that my mom hadn't come to get me, that I was abandoned. Even though I know that obviously wasn't the case, but I have that memory. And that's kind of what this episode is about. It's those traumatizing memories or those experiences that we might have had when we were younger and working through them basically. So we're going to start at the end where we see little toddler Mackenzie and he's going down the slide and he comes out and then he sees this beautiful bright light and it kind of disorientates him a little bit. He's sort of looking around saying, mum, mum, and that's all he can probably really remember. Now, obviously this idea of being left alone from his mom or being abandoned by her has stuck with him and he's never been able to really process it. And as I said before, separation anxiety is a really common experience in children. And Mackenzie, he just doesn't remember past this point of what happened next. So leaving that sort of end scene and going back to the start of this episode, we find out that Jack knows a lot about space and he's deciding who's gonna be what job. And he gives the job of chief scientist to Mackenzie. Mackenzie doesn't know what that means, so Jack tells him, you know, he's the one who figures everything out and fixes stuff. And this is basically going to be the journey that Mackenzie goes on for this episode. They then have a choice of either going to Mars or a black hole, but Mackenzie doesn't know what a black hole is, so Jack explains it. The sun that got really small and makes a hole, I think. What happens if you go in it? No one knows. And if you watch Mackenzie's face as he's explaining what a black hole is, you can see that it's triggering his memory of that slide because it sounds almost the exact same. Going in through a dark tunnel, a bright light coming out of nowhere. It's almost the exact same thing in his head and you can see that it's triggered that memory for him. And of course, he then becomes kind of confused by it as well as mad and sad and he starts to act that out. And again, a really common thing of children acting out these feelings through play. Mackenzie also really kind of tests Rusty and Jack by seeing if they will come and find him, seeing if they will abandon him like he feels like his mother abandoned him on that slide. And when Jack finally confronts him about this and realizes that, you know, he's sort of doing this to himself, Mackenzie doesn't even know why he's doing it to himself. He's still really confused. He's trying to process why it is that he's feeling the way it is, like what has caused this. Eventually, Mackenzie sort of realizes that he just needs to go to the black hole. Like that's what triggered this memory and that's where he kind of wants to go. And so, Jack kind of supports him in this and eventually Rusty does too. And they say, okay, if this is your choice, then this is what we're going to do. And I think the confidence that Rusty and Jack have in Mackenzie gives Mackenzie the confidence as well to feel like he is safe to explore these feelings, safe to go through this black hole by himself. And because he's the chief scientist, as he says, it's his job to figure things out and fix stuff. And because of this, he's now less fearful of that separation. So as he goes through that black hole, he relives that memory again, but this time he actually remembers what happens afterwards. Calypso is the one who finds him, who tells him, no, your mom is here, turn around, look. 
and his mom is there. She pipes him, but because he's able to now relive this memory, he realizes that no, he wasn't abandoned, that his mom was there, that he doesn't need to feel scared or mad that he might be left alone. And then this is where probably this didn't really happen in his memory, but he envisions Calypso almost as like this therapist type. And I think we all kind of see her that way too. But she tells him like, you know what's here now. You don't have to keep coming back to this place. You know what happened afterwards. You don't need to keep coming back thinking that you're abandoned because you weren't. Your mom was there the whole time. You just got disoriented and felt a little bit lost. So he understands this now and seeing his mom and seeing Calypso, it kind of fades in then to seeing the girls rush forward and his friends coming as well and you can see that all of a sudden Mackenzie he feels that he can trust his family his friends his teacher because he knows they're always going to be there to support him and they're not going to leave him alone and of course Rusty is going to always come back for him because that's the kind of guy Rusty is Basically what Ludo Studios is trying to do here through this episode of Bluey is explore the fears that children have and the experiences that they have and how that they can be worked through and processed through play. We've seen this before in the episode Copycat where Bluey is processing the idea of death and she works it out through play. She recreates it, reenacts it, and is able to come to terms with it. This is the exact same thing that's happened here, but this time we just have Mackenzie working through his idea of separation, anxiety, and abandonment. Which is pretty deep, but not surprising because Ludo has tackled sort of deep subjects before and this is their way of doing it. And I definitely think if you know someone or if you know a child that is going through these issues at the moment, this could be a really great episode for them to see and understand that, you know, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. You don't just have to feel that separation anxiety. There is also someone there to support you and help you. So with the more deeper stuff out of the way, let's move on to, I guess, the more funner stuff of all the Easter eggs and references. So in the first scene, we see a couple of the other characters there at the school we see the chicken that we see sort of walking around a few different times but most recently in the episode stories and also the little river from Barky Boats that Mackenzie and Bluey played with and the most obvious reference I feel like for this whole episode for space is the 2001 movie Space Odyssey it's also funny that the boys call their robot Dudatron like hey dude yeah dude so kind of a reference to when the girls were saying hey dude all the time to Bandit. We do have a fourth wall break in this episode as well, not surprising, but this is a really interesting one. It comes from Jack and he literally turns to the camera and tells us that they're not called meteors, they're called asteroids. So a very like unique in your face fourth wall break. We also see Rusty in the background at some stages doing push-ups, which is very reminiscent of the episode Army. But then we also see Rusty doing like karate moves as well and then bowing at the end. So obviously Rusty does karate too. Also when Mackenzie's a toddler, you can see sort of these blurred outlines around him. There's some shopping carts, so you can tell he's in like a shopping center. And one of the blurred outlines looks a lot like our musician with the glasses who we've seen in Dance Mode and Markets, who's also voiced by Joff Bush, who creates all the music for Bluey. Of course, the boat the boys are using as their spaceship is the exact same one they used for the episode Explorers earlier in season 3A. One of the coolest space references though, I think, is that when Mackenzie is looking at the the tire and the bridge as if it is his black hole that actually really looks a lot like a real life black hole and how light bends around the circle so the fence basically is representing how that light bends around it really cool that they made it actually look a lot like a real black hole and of course on the other end of the black hole we have all of our fairies so i love that they look kind of like fairies and aliens at the same time. It reminds me a lot of the episode fairies, but also down in the bottom corner there, you can see our long dog who's also playing along, pretending to be an alien too. And that is all of the sort of Easter eggs and references that I found. Is there anything that you spotted that I didn't? If so, let me know in that comment section down below. This was of course a really beautiful episode. I didn't do a live stream watch along for this one just because it was on Father's Day, but I think I might at the end of season three be in a few days. Maybe we might get together and do a watch along party for this episode. Cause it's something that I think is enjoyed more, the more times you watch it and you understand it. So make sure you hit that subscribe and bell notification so that you know when we're going to do that watch along so we can all do it together and chat about it while we're watching. But until then I have picked out a few other different videos that, that you might like, and I will see you in another video. Mwah. Bye.